Hello friends, welcome back to OK Java. Guys, in this video, we'll talk about REST API interview questions. All right, guys, very first question. What do you understand by RESTful web services? You can start your answer by saying RESTful web services are services that follow REST architecture. So guys, REST, what is REST? REST is an architectural style. Okay, REST stands for representational state transfer and it uses HTTP protocol for implementation. Okay, these services are lightweight, provide maintainability, scalability, support communication among multiple applications that are developed using different programming languages. Okay, they provide means of accessing resources present at server via the web browser by means of request headers, request body, response body, and status codes. All right. So guys, if you answer this particular question that what do you understand by RESTful web services? If you answer by using these points, that is more than enough. Okay, let's move to the next question. What is a REST resource? Every contained in REST API is considered a resource. The resource is analogous to the object in the object oriented programming. They can either be represented as text files, HTML pages, images, or any other dynamic data so guys whatever you see in the rest api is a content okay the rest server provides access to these resources whereas the rest client consumes these resources every resource is identified globally by means of an uri let me show you postman so guys i am going to make a get call to get the student one so what do you see here this data guys so this is the student object having id name first name last name and email right so this is an object in rest this is also known as rest content not only the object you are dealing with files html pages or text file or pdf so everything is a resource okay let's move to the next question this next question is what is uri so uri stands for uniform resource identifier which is used for identifying each resource of the rest architecture here's the format you will have your protocol like http or https your service name resource type and the id for example let me take you to so guys if you see here this particular endpoint let me make the get call so what do you see this particular endpoint is known as uri okay so here it has got the protocol http or https because i'm running on localhost so it's http but in production you will have https then your server name and then your resource type right you're talking about students and then the id guys next question what are the features of restful web services first feature is the service is based on client server model what does it mean my localhost is my server okay and the client which i'm using is postman okay so rest architecture or restful web services follows the client server model there is going to be a server which will host your data and you will have a rest client to consume the data okay next point the service uses http protocol for fetching the data or resources query execution or any other functions okay so guys whatever you see here right then we have got put patch delete so guys these all are http protocol functions okay these resources are accessible to the service by means of urs so urs as i mentioned your endpoints Next point, it follows the statelessness concept where the client requests and responses are not dependent on others. So guys, stateless is very important feature. So basically, in very simple words, REST server does not maintain the user session. Okay, let me give you one example. Say for example, you have got this particular application called, what do we call that? Flipkart is one application as a user, like you are a user. If you log in once to this application, you don't have to re-login again. Okay. You can go and make use of whatever pages you want. All right. So basically as a user, you just have to go and log in once and then flip card right here on this particular application, your server maintain a user session. So that session will keep all your information. So you don't have to re login again. You don't have to re authenticate yourself uh, as long as your session is valid. Once your session is expired, you have to re login, right? But in case of rest API, in case of rest API, rest server does not maintain the user session so what does it mean it means you are making a call to rest server right so you have to pass your username and password with the http request so if you are calling this rest server 
10 times or 20 times or 100 times you have to pass your username and password every single time okay why because the server does not maintain the user session so you have to authenticate yourself every single time okay okay guys next point is these services also use the concept of caching to minimize the server calls for the same type of repeated request okay so caching is just a mechanism to keep the most frequent data at the server side to avoid the unnecessary call to the server next point these services can also use SOP services as implementation protocol to rest architecture pattern okay so we'll talk about this particular point at later point of the video all right guys let's move next question what is the concept of statelessness in rest just now I explained right the rest architecture is designed in such a way that the client state is not maintained on the server okay so client so we are sending a sending a request to the server and you're getting a response right so every time you have to tell to the server that who you are and what level of access you have say for example you want to make a get call so every time you have to provide your id and password that yes i am authorized user to access this particular information or say for example if you are making a post call you have to provide your username and password saying that i do have the right set of permission to perform this particular operation okay so server doesn't know about you so as many times you have to reach out to the server you have to provide your user id and password all right guys let's move next is what do you understand by jax rs so what exactly is jax rs is java api for restful web services it is a java based specification to implement restful services okay jax rs library makes use of annotations from java 5 onwards to simplify the process of web services development the latest version is 3.0 which was released in june 2020 this specification also provides necessary support to create rest clients okay so guys jx rs is a java library to design restful apis okay let's move next is what are the http status codes now is the very easy way to memorize the status codes is like you have to memorize the sequence like for example there is sequence for 100 200 300 400 and 500 okay so 100 uh, from 100 to 199 so this particular series represents informational responses okay from 200 to 299 represents successful resources like we have got 200 201 203 like that right then 300 series 300 to 399 represents redirects or forwards okay then we have got 400 series 400 to 499 represents client error so wherever you see this 400 series message it means there is a problem with the rest client and next one is 500 series so wherever you see 500 series it means there is a problem with the server okay so guys you can visit this particular endpoint this particular url to read more about the http status codes 200 which is success or okay 201 is resource created when you make a post call or a put okay 400 is bad request 401 is unauthorized it means like you don't have sufficient access 403 is forbidden it means like you are not authorized to perform that particular operation 404 resource not found 500 internal server error 502 bad gateway so basically this is that we did not get the the response from the server okay so guys these are the most frequent one but there are many more so what you can do is you can visit the this particular link and you can read about all the most widely used or most frequently used status codes all right guys next question what are the http methods so we have got get so get is used for fetching the details from the server and it is a read only operation so this is my rest client postman what i'm doing is i'm making a get call to this particular endpoint i pass the id 5 if i go and hit this particular button what do i see i have got information right so get is to retrieve to fetch the information from the server and guys you can see like i'm getting the information right so this is a read only operation i don't have access to update the resource to delete the resource to modify the resource because i'm performing get operation so get is a read only operation okay post post is used for for creation of new resources on the server the next one is put put is used to update the existing resource on the server or to replace the resource then next method is delete so this method is used to delete the resource on the server 
patch function we use to partially update a resource then next one is options so this fetches the list of support options of resources present on the server so guys let me explain these functions quickly by using the postman okay let's talk about post first right so here i have choose post my function here is my endpoint or uri and say i want to add one more resource so post is to create new resource okay say for example i am adding here a new resource called virat kohli okay let me send this request what do i say i have got 201 resource created so post method is used to add or to create a new resource into the server if i go and run right let me just go and fetch the resource which we just added now number seven we have got virat kohli right next is put so we use put function to update the existing resource so for example i want to update the email address of virat kohli right or some other information so i have to pass the id as well okay so say i want to keep the name as virat kohli only in the last name i want to add anushka kohli okay and say email also i want to change it to virat dot kohli at the rate gmail.com okay so put function is to update the existing resource okay let me send the request what do i see i have got the information updated information basically the name is still virat but we have changed the last name and email as well okay how can i verify i can go and make the get call again for resource 7 send so this is the new information if i go and check the previous one so initially we had virat and last name was kohli and email was virat at the but now we have changed the information okay so guys points to remember put function is used to update an existing resource and you have to pass the entire object okay you have to also mention the id for which you want to perform the put operation clear now say next is patch guys patch we use to update an existing resource put is also to update the existing resource patch is also to update the existing resource now the difference between patch and put is that in put operation you have to pass the entire object patches you want to partially update resource for example i just want to change the email id i don't want to change the first name and last name i just want to update one or two attributes right so whenever you want to partially update a resource you go and make use of patch operation okay so here i am passing that i want to change uh, the email id of uh, virat kohli again to say what okay here i'll pass id and say email i'll call it as kohli dot virat at the rate gmail dot com okay like that let me make this end request so what do you see i've got a message saying that email updated for id equals to seven how can i go and verify i can go and make a get call to resource seven what do i see we have got the updated email address right so guys i hope you're getting the difference right put is to update the entire object you have to pass the entire object patch is to partially update a resource so you just have to pass whatever things you have to update okay you don't have to pass the entire object to partially update a resource go and make use of patch okay let's move next is guys delete operation delete is to delete the existing resource so i'm going to delete the resource where id equals to seven okay so id 7 is virat kohli right let me just go and run this one what do i see i've got a message resource deleted status code 200 okay okay how can you verify we can just go and click on send what do i see resource not found because we have just deleted what is the other way i can just go and fetch all the resources so what do i see i've got only six resources i don't even see the seventh resource which was virat kohli right so delete is to delete an existing resource now guys one thing if you want to delete you have to very much careful that to delete you have to pass the id okay in case if you do not pass the id what will happen it will delete all your resources from your database right so obviously you don't want to do that so make sure that you handle that particular scenario okay i hope you guys are fine with the http methods now guys next question what are the curled functions so as i just explained right post is to create a new resource get function is to read the resource to get the data to fetch the information right so that is what read is put is to update an existing resource we can use patch also right so put and then to perform delete we use delete method only right the post get put delete corresponds to the 
create, read, update, and delete operations. Okay, so interviewer can ask you like, how can you perform the card operations? You simply go and tell him about the post, get, put, and delete. You can use these functions to perform the card operations. All right, guys. All right, guys. I think we are good for now. I'll come back with the next video to cover rest of the REST API interview questions. Thank you for watching and please do share and subscribe the channel. Thank you.